Hi there, Mario Francisco Robles, Revenge of the Fans, here with your official RTF review for Venom. So, check it out. Venom is one of those films that's it's gonna come down to your expectations. As long as you go in with reasonable to low expectations, I think you're gonna have a nice time, because that's kind of what I did. Last night I went and I checked it out, I had high hopes, but low expectations, because unfortunately, for better or worse, We've been hearing a lot of negative chatter, a lot of down buzz on this movie for, you know, the last few weeks especially. So my expectations were very much kind of like low, but I, I wanted to like it. I went in wanting to like it because I love Tom Hardy, I love Venom, I love some of the stuff in the, in the most recent trailers. So I went in just wanting to love it, but understanding that this might not be that good of a movie. Um, and what ended up happening was I was thoroughly entertained. I really enjoyed it. I mean, this really is a depiction of Venom that I've always dreamt of. You know, when I used to watch the animated uh, Spider-Man cartoon on Fox back in the early to mid-90s, like, I fell in love with that Venom, and this feels like a live-action version of that Venom. This is the Venom I've always wanted to see. So that was really, really cool. On top of that, I really enjoyed Tom Hardy, especially when he's, you know, like, eccentric and eclectic and kind of like, you know, creating a unique offbeat character. And he does that here with Eddie Brock. Like, he's a kind of all over the place, but I think that's the point. I think that, you know, the people who are criticizing his performance, I think are missing the point. He's trying to play a guy who's very, like, mentally damaged and neurotic, who has a lot of internal demons and an internal monologue that spills out through his mouth because he can't help himself. And I, for one, really enjoyed it. So as a Tom Hardy fan, I don't know why I just kind <clears> of <throat> went through puberty there for a second, but I, as a Tom Hardy fan and as a Venom fan, had a very nice time watching this movie. Now, let's get to some of the flaws, though, because that's the thing. These flaws stop the movie from being good, and they, make, they leave it at just okay. The movie's only okay because of these flaws. So, A, the plot is very just kind of paint-by-numbers, straightforward. We've seen it before. There's nothing special to it. And I've always argued that a film doesn't need to have the most crazy, inventive, unique, original plot in the world to be a good film. Sometimes the films that have hardly any plot whatsoever are even more moving than the ones that have the most ingenious plot we've ever heard. I always think about Alfonso Cuarón's Gravity. Gravity, the plot is like one sentence. There's, no, there's nothing to it, but it's still riveting. So in this particular case, the plot is neither original or riveting. And the ride through it, you know, it's, it's hit or miss. But the plot is notable in how sort of bare it is. Then you have a villain who is very sort of underdeveloped. And it's a shame because Riz Ahmed is one of my favorite current actors. I've loved him in so I loved him in The Night Of. I like I enjoyed him as Bodhi in Rogue One. I've enjoyed him in everything I've seen him in. I've seen him in, you know, for the last few years. I'm like, oh, I, re I, I loved him in Nightcrawler too. So he's I'm a big fan of his. But he didn't have a lot to work with here. And what, what was odd about the decision for what they made like the big villain plot was they went kind of big with it. They went high-minded. They gave him one of those very sort of relatable motivations. One of those things where it's like the classic trope of the villain who thinks he's helping, but he's actually hurting. So they kind of reference this whole thing where he thinks we're destroying the Earth. And he thinks that the planet is going to be uninhabitable within a generation or so. And that's why he's trying to find a way for us to be able to exist on another planet. For us to be able to go and survive on another planet. Hence why he's doing all this experimentation with the symbiotes. Trying to see if we can merge with them and be a host to them. And then you know, if we can help them survive here, then they can help us survive up there. So it's an interesting plot. But it's just kind of like glazed over, it's mentioned, but it's not given much importance. And overall, his plot feels very sort of ineffectual. And it feels kind of like Riz didn't have a lot, wasn't given a lot to do, except kind of stand there with this big eyes of his delivering some, some exposition from time to time. But overall, you know, he doesn't feel like a fully fleshed out character, so which, which is you know, disappointing because his motivation is actually rather intriguing. But, you know. Then the big thing, the big sort of swing and a miss, and this was shocking to me, by the way, was Michelle Williams. 
Michelle Williams is a highly respected actress. She's been nominated for four Academy Awards. She's known for being one of the better actresses of her generation. But she is unbelievably out of place in this movie. I don't know what it is, but she just phoned it in. You could tell even she was just like, I don't know what I'm doing here. I should be off doing an Oscar movie. What is this? Because she just seems to kind of just be stiff as a board through a lot of it. She has zero chemistry with Hardy. And by the way, and that's a two-way street. You know, Hardy and her could have worked a little more on their chemistry. Maybe there just wasn't any there and they couldn't, you know, if you can't, if you don't have it, you don't have it. But... It, it, that's a killer in a movie like this because one of the emotional through lines in this is his relationship with Anne and, and the trials and tribulations they go through and his desire. I don't want to spoil anything, but, you know, that love story is important. It anchors Eddie Brock's story and it's supposed to be where you feel the sympathy and the pathos and all the emotions for him as what he goes through with her is kind of, yeah, it, it's up and down just to kind of put it mildly. But since they have no chemistry and since she doesn't really seem to even want to be there, uh, it just kind of falls flat. And that's a big shame. And it's very surprising for an actress of her caliber, who, by the way, just technical note, for whatever reason, they have her in a wig and it's a pretty hideous wig. It was like distractingly bad. Like she's walking around with a mop on her head. I'm like, why? Why couldn't they leave her with her little pixie cut? Whatever. This wig did nobody any favors. Um, but in terms of the movie, listen. I recommend it. If you're if only, I should I should specify, I recommend it if you're a Venom fan and if you're a Tom Hardy fan. Otherwise, if you have anything else you'd rather do this weekend, go do that instead because this movie's not for you. Because it it is a very sort of rushed, sort of incomplete experience, and there's a lot of time building up to the third act, and then the third act arrives and it's over really quickly, and the whole thing resolves itself perhaps faster than it should have, and. While certain big meaningful things are referenced or shown or you know kind of you know implied, they're all sort of glazed over in favor of just keeping this sort of light and funny and like a popcorn film. You know, now outside of critiquing the film that's there, personally, I wish it would have been more almost like a like a creature feature, a little more of like almost like a horror hybrid type film, more gritty, more low budget, a little more, you know, Venom as a monster. But, you know, they went a different route with it that, you know, and and the route they went with, I think they pulled off relatively well. Uh, I love the dynamic between Eddie and Venom in his head because there's a lot of this mechanism where you hear him speaking to Eddie from inside his head. And it's hilarious. And the funny thing is some people wanted to like criticize it. Like they, they say some of it's like unintentionally hilarious. No, it's intentionally hilarious. One scene, and this doesn't really spoil much, but there's a scene between Eddie Brock and a woman and... Eddie's like, you know, Venom's inside Eddie's head trying to give him like relationship advice. And it's absurd and it's hilarious in how absurd it is to hear this big alien voice saying, Eddie, say this. Eddie, now you should apologize. Eddie, and Eddie's doing it like it's, listen, I found that stuff funny. And that's the thing about this movie that some people seem to be missing. The movie is funny. They're going for humor. Ruben Fleischer, the director, and Tom Hardy clearly have this rhythm together in this movie, and it went over some people's heads, and some people were laughing, they think, at the movie, but you're actually laughing with it because they're pointing out some of these absurd situations. And mind you, I could watch an entire movie of Eddie Brock kind of walking around San Francisco interacting with people with Eddie giving him, you know, with Venom giving him terrible advice from inside his head. Because that's, I just think that's hilarious and it's one of the better dynamics in the movie. That's why it's almost a shame that it takes so long for them to get there. Because that is where the movie really shines. This whole movie shines on Tom Hardy's performance and on the Venom character itself. The way the symbiote interacts with him, the way it looks once it takes over his body, that relationship that they build is what this movie's about. And at the end of the day, too, the movie's only about an hour and 40 minutes. It's a pretty short, fun, brief ride. So it's something where it's like, you're not going to be sitting there going, oh my God, when is this going to be over? That's not one of those kind of movies. So even if you don't end up loving it, it's just a nice entertaining diversion for a couple, you know, for an hour and a half, an hour and 40. And sometimes you want that. Not every movie has to be Logan. You know, not every movie has to be this big epic. It has, you know, it's... 
it's just a fun diversion is what this is. And I, for one, would love to see it continue. They set up stuff for a sequel and I'd like to see it because now we're going to have a fully functioning Eddie and Venom dynamic where he's going to be in Eddie's head the whole time. And what they've set up for the sequel seems pretty exciting when you think of that because it's going to be a crazy movie if they get around to making it. So I'm hoping that this thing makes some money. I hope that we get to see where they're going with this because there's potential here. There is. Is it a good movie? No. It's an okay movie. That's why the grade for this is a C plus. You know, that's it. It's, it's, it's nothing less. Some people are trying to act like it's a total train wreck, disaster, calamity. It's an F. Oh my God. No, it's a C plus as far as I'm concerned, you know, with, with opinions being all subjective and it's all relative to me. I went in with low expectations. I enjoyed it. It was okay. And I have no regrets having seen it. If you love Tom Hardy and you love Venom, I recommend you check it out too. Just know there's not a lot of meat on the bone here. All right. So thanks for watching. Check out Venom. Keep watching. Uh, keep visiting revengeofthefans.com. Subscribe here to our YouTube channel. There's going to be a lot more video content coming up in the weeks and months to come. Thanks for watching.